In this video, I'm going to build up a confidence interval for a true mean when the true standard deviation, or sigma, is unknown. Okay, and here's my sample. Let's say that I am um, producing these hexagon hex bolts. Uh, and in some industries, it can be quite stringent as to um, how exact the diameters are of the bolts, etc., etc. Um, okay, so in this case, I have 100 bolts that have been sampled, they're screws, um, and I find that the average length of them is uh, 0.6245, okay, with a standard deviation of 0.01244. These are in inches. Uh, little note, these screws are supposed to be 5 eighths in length, so we're not too far off. 5 eighths inches is 0.625. Okay, and again, we've sampled 100 of them. You can also just calculate that with a count call on all your data. Beautiful. And now we're ready to start going and doing the calculations we need to build up the confidence interval for the true uh, length or true average length of a screw in this batch. Okay, so first thing we're going to need is what's called the degrees of freedom. And it's just your sample size minus one. I'll just comment that out here. So degrees of freedom is just 99 in this case. Now, next, we're going to state a confidence level. So this is often chosen by the industry, by somebody else, perhaps by you. Um, it's not something you need to go calculate. It's something that's chosen for a level of certainty, if you will. So let's say it's 99% in this case. Um, that gives us what's called an alpha of one minus that or 1%. Let's have a quick look in a minute here at a diagram to better understand these two metrics here. Okay, so if you can see the confidence level is always that area in the middle, so in this case 99%, and alpha is the area to the outsides of that confidence interval split between the two tails, so each tail has alpha over 2% in it. Okay, now let's keep going with our problem. The next thing we're going to need to go get is called a t-score, and we're going to use t.inv.2t in this video to get that value. And inside of the t.inv, this probability that we input is this alpha. Okay, so that 1% in this case. And then we go grab our degrees of freedom, which again is that n minus 1. Awesome. And once we have gotten our t-score, we can now go get our error. I'm just going to pause the video and pull up that formula. Beautiful. So here is our margin of error formula, this guy right here. Take your t-score times your sample standard deviation, divide by the root of your sample size. So that's what we're going to go do now. So take your t-score times your sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of your, um, sorry, times by your sample standard deviation. There it is, just an in E3, divided by the square root of your sample size in E4 in our case, and that is your margin of error value. Okay, now let's have a look at how that looks, or what that, that um, value um, contributes to the confidence interval. So I'm just going to pause the video and pull up another diagram. Beautiful. Okay, so once we've got our margin of error, that is actually what we add and subtract from our sample mean to get our lower and upper bounds for our confidence interval. So we take that margin of error, 
and we subtract it from our sample mean for our lower bound. And we take and we add it to our sample mean for our upper bound. Beautiful. So again, take your sample mean minus your margin of error to get your lower bound. Take your sample mean and add your margin of error to get your upper bound. So this is my 95% or sorry, my 99% confidence interval for this problem. So the true length of each of these uh, hexagon head cap screws is somewhere between 0.6212 inches and 0.6277 inches with 99% certainty. Beautiful. And that concludes our video on building up a confidence interval when sigma is unknown and we are using the t.inf.2t formula to get our t-score. Thanks for watching.